Welcome back, welcome back. It is me, Britt Reacts, and today we are reacting via a kind suggestion to Bummer by Harry Chapin. Let's see what he has to say. So flute? Love a flute. Okay, if you hear it and think racism, then you're not listening, exclamation mark. Uh, Dwight Hal Johnson, 1947 to 1971, a native of Detroit, Michigan, was a United States Army soldier who received the Medal of Honor for his actions in January 1968 during the Vietnam War. All right, we got some, some backstory, and you know how I feel about backstory. <laughs> the music is just fantastic. Two plays have been written about Johnson's tragic life, the second of which was also produced and shown on PBS, Strike Heaven on the Face by Richard Wesley and the Medal of Honor, Honor Rag by Tom Cole. The poet Michael S. Harper also wrote a poetry series in 1973 titled, what does that say? What is that word? D? Breedment. Debreedment? Debreedment? One song has been written about Johnson's tragic life with some poetic license. Bummer by Harry Chapin on Portrait Gallery, Electra Entertainment 1975. I feel like I shouldn't be dancing because this is apparently sad, but the music is so good. How could you not move your shoulders? There's literally some of everything. Okay, here we go. It's like an 80 piece orchestra. My lord. His mama was a midnight woman. His daddy was a drifter drummer. One night they put it together. Nine months later came the little black bummer. Okay. He was a laid back lump in the cradle. Woo! Paint chips that fell from the ceiling. Whenever he cried, he got a fist in his face. So he learned not to show his feelings. Oh my God. This man, I think, only must have sung, composed, been anywhere near songs that literally told the most illustrated stories. Like everything I've heard him sing jumps from the page, jumps out of my like headphones and just comes to life. It's all so perfectly written that you can see it happening in front of you. All right, his mom was a woman of midnight, which I think you could think her skin, but also meaning she's like a street walker, if you will. His dad was a, hold on, we can go back because the lyrics are here on the screen, honey. Uh, his daddy was a drifter drummer. So his dad just got, he, he gigged, he gigged. All right. He, he was a gigger. Uh, one night they came together and boom, here you have him. Uh, he was laid back. He was a laid back lump in the cradle. So he just, you know, he was just a little chill dude. He just chewed the paint chips that fell from the ceiling, which go to show you they, maybe lived in poverty, but what I hear more from that is that there was a lot of chaos in the house, so much so that there was some rattling going on upstairs. You take that with whatever grain of salt you want to. Whenever he cried, he got a fist in the face, so he learned to show no feeling. So someone was abusive. We could probably guess who, uh, but because of this, 
he stops showing his feelings because if, if I cry, you punch me, I'm going to stop crying. I'm going to hold it all in, right? All right, let's keep going. That's sad. I come out. He was a laid back lump in the cradle. Ooh, the the brass. From the ceiling. Whenever he cried, he got a fist in his face. So he learned not to show his feelings. Oh my god, the composition is just. Other world. He was a big tail puller in grammar school. Okay. Left back twice by the seventh grade. Sniffing glue in junior high. And the first one in school to get laid. All right. A weed speed push up at 15. He was mainline and skag a year later. And he started pimping when they put him away And Jerry changed from a junkie to a hater and just I'm pressing all the wrong buttons because I'm just like, wow, we are talking about someone's life who is tragic. And I think this just goes to show how important how you are raised is for the trajectory trajectory of your life. And I don't know how people can say like it isn't. How someone is brought up can largely affect how they live their life. And I think this is a picture here. So this kid went from pulling pigtails on the playground to uh, getting left back twice before the seventh grade to getting laid. The first one to get laid in middle school, apparently. Uh, and he went from, you know, very kind of, I don't know low grade things to quickly I you know YouTube has all these words I can't say y'all he he was addicted to things okay uh and then he went to jail as a PIMP and he went from a junkie to a hater I haven't gotten anywhere that I would even start to think of racism and I'm using air quotes because that's what they use, not because I don't think racism is real uh, or isn't real rather. Uh, but I guess there's still so much song left. So let's keep going. This is this man can tell a story. I want I want a TV show. I want a movie. I want a book. I'll read all of it. A Harry. Come on. Don't get to a hate Back on the street, he robbed an AMP. He didn't blink at the body that he shot her dead. And just about the time they would have caught him, too, he had the damn good fortune to get drafted. I mean, we're talking about a kid who put his feelings deep down inside because he got punched in his face. So, of course, now, as an adult, he's got absolutely no feeling left. So, yeah, this makes sense. But before they could catch him for the crime, he got drafted into the war. This is so good. This is like, I need some popcorn and a beer. I mean, this is telenovela good. This is as the world turns, days of our lives good, honey. Yes, I know what those are. My grandmother used to make me watch all of them. Holy cow, this is good. Hey. You hear the trombones and the trumpets? He was A1 bait for Vietnam. You see, they needed more bodies in a hurry. He was a sense to train, cause all they had to do was to figure how to funnel his fury. He was already angry enough to be there. Woo! They put him in a tank near the DMZ to catch the goods slipping over the border. And they said his mission was to search and destroy. And for once, he followed another. He was really good. Sweat soaked day in the young pole valley with the ground 
rain, still steaming from the rain. There was a bloody little battle that didn't mean nothing, except to the few that remain. I'm sorry, I just have to read this out loud, the illustrating this man is doing through a song. One sweat-soaked day, it was hot outside. The young In the young Po Valley, with the ground still steaming from the rain, it was so hot that rain had to come. Y'all know when it gets so hot in the south and the rain just has to like, the sky breaks open to clear, like to like release some of the heat. That's how it was in Vietnam, in Young Po Valley. It was so hot that it rained. And then the heat from the ground and the water from the sky created steam. I mean, the way this man illustrates through lyrics will send me into cardiac arrest. Cardiac, cardiac arrest. <laughs> Why do y'all come here? I don't know how to talk. It's beautiful. It's beautiful the way he writes. He needed to write all the history books in school in this way. It's just poetry and motion. Oh, My goodness gracious. Right mean here. nothing except to the few that remained. You see a couple hundred slants that trapped the other five tanks. And it started to pick off the crews. When it came on the scene, and it really did seem this is why he paid those dues. It was something like a hold on. You see a couple of hundred Does that say slants had trapped the other five tanks and had started to pick off the crew, so they got trapped in in a in an ambush, and they started to like off some people. When he came on the scene. And it really did seem this is why he paid his dues. So this was his time to show up. And all that fury and anger and violence and betrayal and like everything he'd ever been to. This is his time. This is his moment. Okay, let's keep going. This is why he paid those dues. It was something like a butcher gone berserk. Or a sane man acting like a fool. All the bravest thing that a man had ever done All the madman blowing his cool He lost well, it Well, he came on too Like a knife through butter Everybody, a, a knife through butter Sweeping through the grass All the sand like a man Would have said it himself Just a big black bass to kick it ass Okay, is this now why the word racism even comes up? Okay, so this man was so lethal It was like a knife cutting through butter. It was like the side sweepers cutting through grass. And if you've ever seen a side, sweep, side sweeping truck, they're there to sweep the streets, not the grass. So imagine what they're doing to the blades of grass. Again, this is just illustration here, y'all. It is it's so poetic. Or to say, to say it like the man would have said it himself. So basically, this is what he called himself, not someone else calling him. Y'all, people just want to be offended. The fact that someone had to write a cautionary you know, title saying like, this is not about racism. And it literally says on the same, on the same way that he would have set, called himself. He's a big, you know what I mean? Like, I get it, Harry. Harry, I hear you. I see you. I find no offense to that. I think this story is riveting. I am just so, I'm locked in. Like I, I could literally turn the pages on this for days. Is this a true story? Is it true? Did it say it was true at the top? I can't remember. Is this true? <laughs> Said it himself, just a big black bass to kick it out. And just like the man from the precinct said, put him away, you better kill him instead. A bummer like that, he's better off dead. Someday they're gonna have to put a bullet in his head. The music, listen to this. And the smoke had cleared There were a lot of V.C. bodies in the mud And when the rescue men came over for the very first time They found him smiling as he lay in his blood Oh, so he was crazy, crazy He was crazy he, he was crazy before he got over there What was he like when he, did he get home? Did he make it home? How was he when he got there? Did he make it home? Let's find out 
They picked up the pieces and they stitched him back together. He pulled through, though they thought he was a goner. And it forced them to give them what they said they would. Six purple hearts and the medal of honor. He slouched as the chief white honky said Sinners is beyond the call of duty But the first soft thought was passing through his mind I'm a middle as a mother of a beauty He got a couple of jobs with a ribbon on his chest And though he tried, he really couldn't do them There were only a couple of things I think this is such a true statement. I think this is such a true statement. I think there are some people in this world who find it really hard to listen to authority. I think there are some people in this world who find it really hard to just be on the straight and narrow, to show up to a job every day at the same time, do the same mundane things. I think I'm one of those people when it comes to like school. Like I was as good as school as I needed to be. Like I brought home the grades I was supposed to bring home. But like the minute I had a choice to go elsewhere, I went elsewhere. <laughs> and so though his other things, the things that he's good at or not, they're bad things. Um, I do believe this to be true that people really can be vexed sometimes with just not being able to follow the straight and narrow. And then you think about someone like him, again, from the beginning, the conception of his life. It's always been a battle. It's always been violence. It's always been lack of emotion. Like he was almost born and bred to be a sociopath. So, sociopath, psychopath? I don't know. I'm not a therapist. I'm not a psychiatrist. Go ahead and correct me in the comments, all right? Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> Um, I'm, I, y'all, I'm so invested in this story. So he was really trained for, and found himself back to I wish I had popcorn, but I only have candy. Is that a trombone or a trumpet? Just about the time he was ready to break. Tuba? The VA stopped sending him his checks. Oh, no. Just a matter of time, because there was no doubt about what he was going to do next. What's he going to do? It ended up one night in a grocery store. Gun in hand and nine cops at the door. And when his last battle was over, he lay crumpled and broken on the floor. And just like the man from the precinct, Put him away, you better kill him instead A bummer like that, he's better off dead Someday they're gonna have to put a bullet in his Alright, so he did make it home But he made it home with PSD on top of everything else I think that's fair to say He lost his mind There was a standoff in the grocery store and just like the man in the precinct said, y'all better lay him down before he lays somebody else down. I'm just here to paraphrase. Don't shoot the messenger. Pun intended. This is so tragic. Like the, the prerequisite, uh, not prerequisite, whatever, the cautionary situation at the beginning was spot on. Like this is so devastatingly tra it's tragic. And also I wonder how true this, this story is. Not only if it's true about this individual, but like for other people who came back, especially from Vietnam, just destroyed, destroyed. And therefore they destroyed others because of it. Like this is just heartbreaking. But again, so well done, so descriptive. It, it, it makes you just so compassionate towards this person, right, that most people wrote off, whether fictional or not. You can't help but have compassion because you knew he was set up to fail. In my opinion, you, we can agree to disagree. <laughs> Well, he breathed his last, but ten minutes passed. 
before they dared to enter the place. They were scared to go in. And when they flipped this riddle body over, they found body. his second smile frozen on his face. Not a smile. They found his gun where he'd thrown it. There was something else clenched in his fist. And when they pried his fingers open, they found the Medal of Honor. And the sergeant said, when the hell he get this? <laughs> we are not doing what y'all did. There was a stew about burying him in Arlington, so they shipped him in a box to Fayette. And they, they didn't want to bury him in, in the uh, Arlington is in Virginia, and I believe it's like a military um, cemetery, right? Isn't it interesting that he can go over to Vietnam and I don't know, do what he did? and be awarded but he comes home and he's angst from that he's damaged from that and i mean i he was committing said crimes before this but i just think harry does a good job of saying like he has a literal purple heart from i don't want to say committing the same acts but do you are we on the same page i don't know i just i think this is so well done um gosh this is this is so they shipped him in a box to Fayette. I don't know where And they stashed him in a grave in the county flats. The kind we remember to forget. And just like the man from the precinct said, put him away, you better kill him instead. A bummer like that is better off dead. Someday they're gonna have to I think the like fierceness of the orchestra and the <clears throat> excuse me the just kind of like it was ferocious the, or the orchestra was strong it was big it was loud it was bold it was bright it was it was dynamic there were levels to it there were you know what I mean there were pockets of all this music underneath this really sad story just made it uh a journey to listen to that was wild i want a book i want a show i want a movie i need it all wow harry all right y'all i'm sure i missed the mark on some things just because history was not my favorite <laughs> um and i meant no offense if i did miss the mark so feel free to politely educate me in the comments and give me some grace um i do think there was a lot to unpack here and i think Again, it, it made me feel super compassionate to uh, Vietnam, specifically veterans, because I don't know how much I knew um, going into listening to this song, but I think Harry did a beautiful job of illustrating it for me. So not only was I able to read it, hear it, but I feel like I saw it, you know? The, the, again, the rain and the, the ground and the steam and the sweat-soaked day, like it just came to life. It was like the scenes were playing out in front of me and I think that's what his magic is his superpower is that so I appreciate this one a lot I hope you enjoyed it talk to me in the comments make sure you're subscribed and go and have the day you deserve bye